Hi, welcome to the channel. Today we are going to introduce more design patterns that are frequently used in game development. So there will be three、uh, patterns introduced. The first one being single responsibility principle. The single responsibility principle states that a class should have only one reason to change, meaning that it should have only one job. All responsibility. In the context of game development, this ensures that each component is focused on a specific task, making the code more maintainable and flexible. For example, a component handling a player's movement should not also manage the game score or other unrelated aspects. Second pattern is separation of concerns. Separation of concerns is a design principle that divides a computer program into distinct section, each addressing a separate concerns or functionality. This separation enables developers to work on one aspect of a program without having to touch others. In game development, this could mean having different components for handling graphics, physics, AI, etc. By keeping these concerns separate, you can modify or enhance one part of the game without affecting others, thus improving maintainability. In order to achieve a separation of concerns,、uh, we need to introduce additional patterns.、Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to introduce event bus pattern. The event bus pattern is a software architectural. Pattern that enables various components to communicate without being directly connected to each other. It acts like a central hub where events are sent by one part of a program, the publisher, and received by others, the subscribers. In game development, an event bus can be used to handle interactions between different parts of a game, such as player actions, AI responses, or UI updates. By using an event bus, game components can interact in a loosely coupled way, making the system more modular and easier to extend or modify. I've done implementation of the game demo by utilizing those three patterns, and the game demo is based on Double Dragon Arcade version. The assets I was able to find from like some website. And、uh, the sprite for the character, I have to do、uh, some modification、uh, in order to make it suit our use case. Let's look at the game demo. The player can go eight directions, which is typical for any side scroller games. We can also see、uh, the player cannot go, cannot clip through the walls, and it wouldn't go off the screen. When the player approaching the ladder, he is able to climb up and down the ladder. He can also walk on the top of the roof. He can also fall from it. The same features have been implemented for both ladders. The main features we want to、uh, demo and implement is the accuracy of collision detections. We use various different shapes. To define the collision, and also we want to show how to make accurate communication between the player and its environment by using event bus. Next, let's look at the code. Let's look at the structure of the game. We have a main scene inside which we have two separate scenes. The first one is map. The second one is character. Let's first look at the character scene.、Uh, the parent node of the character、uh, player is character body two D, and we use this to、uh, interact with、uh, static body. So whenever we、uh, collect, we clash with a、uh, static body, the player will stop moving. So in order to show different、uh, state、uh, of the character, we have a sprite two D. In the sprite two D, we give all the available sprites for this character's movements. 
in order to uh, prevent, uh, enable the collision detection between the player and uh, stack body, we introduce a collision shape 2D, then followed by a camera 2D, so that uh, the camera we move along with the character. For the character, we also have different movement. That's why we introduce animation player. In the animation player, we have quite a few different uh, animation. We have climb up, falling, idling, idling on ladder, walking, and also walking up. So how do we transition from one animation to another? That's where animation tree comes in. In the animation tree, we introduce different state and uh, we use uh, the player back from the animation player to draw transition between different animations. Let's look at the structure of the map scene. The parent node of the map scene is a sprite 2D. This is where we add the picture for Double Dragon Mission 1. Inside the, the scene, we have two groups of nodes. One is wall. The walls consist of many uh, static body 2D. Uh, the purpose of laying out all these static body 2Ds are pre to prevent player entering certain restricted areas. They are all highlighted with light semi-transparent blue. As you can see, we have a few static body 2D that has one week collision enabled. So you will see an arrow pointing upward. So we have four of them. The reason being, when the player falling down from the roof, we shouldn't enable this uh, collision detection. Otherwise, the player will stop right above that shape and it wouldn't make sense. For all the area 2Ds, we highlight them with a pink color. For area 2D, it behaves differently than the static body 2D. They wouldn't prevent uh, the player from entering uh, certain areas, but it will enable the collision. So when collision happens, we need to uh, generate certain events so that we can uh, react accordingly. For example, the left collision detection here. So this is for the left ladder. So when we come here, we need to tell the system uh, the user is on the ladder so that we need to change uh, the animation to climb up ladder animation. The same thing goes for the right. And on the top, so this, this one user enter this area, we need to generate falling uh, event so that we are going to play uh, the falling animation. We also have falling stopper. So this is during the falling process. When the player enter this area 2D, we are going to stop this falling action and then we change switch to the standing position. That's why uh, we introduce uh, this area 2D. As you can see, how do we generate uh, those events? And we attach them with uh, a script. So uh, when body enters, so this means when the player enters here, we are going to emit uh, signals. Uh, a similar idea is when we exit this, we are going to uh, emit a different signal which is leaving ladder. And following the same strategy, and we do this for right, and when it's falling, we are going to uh, emit a different signal. Uh, so by emitting signals uh, with event bus, that's how we decouple the direct referencing between map and player. This is how we uh, enable um, <coughs> separation of concerns and also make sure the map and the player they only do one thing which should be only applicable to themselves and in the map we shouldn't control how player uh, react 
and in the player we shouldn't care about when we are going to touch with the wall which are defined in the map. Let's look at how we design event bus. Event bus is just a class which extends node, which is the root class for everything we do inside Godot engine. Inside this uh, class, we have four signals. One for landing, another one for falling, and we have another two for uh, ladder entering and leaving the ladder uh, signals. For both the ladder related signals, we also record the user's position and the dimension so that we can position the player in the middle of the ladder. In order to make this event bus available to every class, we need to make it a singleton. So thus, we need to come to project and project settings. We go to autoload, then we select the event bus GD class and that's it. Okay, finally, let's look at how we write the logic for the player. So in the player we have, uh, in the player scene, we have two scripts. One is the player, and here we have uh, a few uh, variable defined. Speed, that controls how fast we can move the player. Sprite is sprite for the player. player uh, playback is a property uh, that is associated with the animation tree. And we use this playback to uh, play the animation for the player and the gravity and we use this gravity to control the falling speed on ladder is whenever uh, the player is on is climbing up or down the ladder can move horizontal and can move vertically we use this to to control you know, the movement of the, the player falling and uh, if the player is falling from the wall this variable will be true and based on this uh, value we display a falling animation so when the player script is ready uh, we started uh, connecting uh, the signal uh, with the, within the event bus so when uh, entering ladder events is triggered by the area 2d we will call the um, climb ladder function so here uh, we are going to control a few things here uh, on ladder of course it's going to be true can move horizontally is false because we can only allow the player to move up and down so the global uh, position of the player we need to calculate this so this is logic we uh, use to center centerize the player uh, in the ladder so leaving ladder is the opposite of what we did for entering ladder we also have falling landing so they all control certain uh, variable we define here now let's go to physics process function um, pro physics process this is where we control the movement of the character um, usually we just use a move and slide to move the user around and as long as we have the proper value for velocity that's how it works uh, in this method, we define a uh, underscore velocity uh, variable. Here, we construct the value for this. If the player can move horizontally based on the direction it is moving, if it is moving to right, then we give a 1 as the value for x, and we don't have to flip this sprite. Otherwise, we give it minus 1 for x and flip the sprite. If the player can go vertically, if it goes down, we give one value for uh, y, otherwise we give minus one for y. If it is not falling, then we are going to normalize the velocity and apply the speed and assign this value to velocity. The reason why we normalize the vector is because the player can go eight directions and we want to make sure along any of those eight directions, the speed remain the same. That's why we use normalize to return a unit uh, vector for us. If it's falling, we want to make uh, the animation uh, more realistic. That is why we give it gravity. And also, we don't want uh, player to move left and right during the falling. That's why we give it zero for x value for the velocity. 
So uh, the rest is really about you know control the animation. If it is falling, then we play falling animation. If it is idling on ladder, we play idling on ladder animation, and so on and so forth. Lastly, let's look at camera 2D uh, GD script. We have three variables here. Player, this is where our camera is falling along. Left limit, this is where we control the boundary of the left camera. Left wall is what we use to uh, prevent player from going off screen. In the process function, we have two functions update camera so the width is the game window width and divided by two so once uh, the user the player is halfway through the horizontal screen that's where we need to recalculate uh, left limit once we calculate the left limit we'll assign it to limit left which is the property of the camera in the left limit we use clamp uh, method to make sure our left limit is always uh, valid so we calculate the left limit with the max of the current cameras limit left and also the players position once we calculate these two we also want to make sure the maximum value is 1281 minus 480 1281 is the width of the sprite the map sprite 480 is the window uh, width so that's the biggest value we have in the build left wall this where we dynamically build a static body because we don't want to keep building uh, the walls which can be resource intense and not very efficient so that's why we have a threshold we only build a left static body 2D when the player uh, <coughs> position is towards the left side is less than or equals 10 pixels. And also, just because uh, the uh, distance is within 10, we don't necessarily <coughs> rebuild this uh, uh, static wall. That's why we also compare the left wall position X with the left limit only build this one they are not equal so here we uh, create a left wall which is static body 2d and we give it a position and also we uh, assign a rectangle shape 2d to it and then uh, we assign this shape to a clear uh, collision shape 2d then we add this as a child and we get the tree and the current scene and add this child so this way the static body 2D will be added to the scene, which can be used to prevent the player from going off screen.